picture and I was like, hi, I'm a feminist. Do not say that to a feminist because you know why? It's e conversation and so high to this level of anger. So, uh, but I felt like even me was tired. Like, the only thing I remember is that I was being choked and like almost like being strangled. That is the thing that traumatized me the most. Hey guys, hey loves, welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we are outside. This is actually an unfinished church building. So I usually come here to just chill because it's super quiet and just look at nature and think. So today I thought let me come and tell you guys this story time. I really don't know how I'm going to tell this story time without making the person feel like the devil. <laughs> but I'm going to try to just explain how I felt in my side of view. So as you can see from the title, it's about my abuse story and this video is inspired not really inspired but triggered by the story of the osinachi the ekueme singer who died because of the abuse of the husband at home so i thought let me share my story maybe it might inspire someone i'm gonna start by explaining my how i was feeling my state of mind and mental health at the point where few months to it happening so i was just done with uni i was depressed depressed I was sad, I was just everything. And you know when I am normally a loner, so when I'm depressed, I even become so much worse. I don't want anybody around me, I'm so much into isolation. Everybody just simply irritates me. So that is what happened. So my character was annoying everyone who was around me. Nobody was understanding what I was going through and yet I had already talked it out. I think they didn't know how to handle people who are depressed. I don't know. Like in African culture, people are just supposed to be, you know, moving. Like depression, I was zungu. months later, just so, after I was done with, you know, I moved to this place. I knew nobody. Nobody knew me. So that even worsened my state of mind. Because no, knowing someone is not just about knowing their name. It's also about knowing who they are and as the saying goes you only know the character of someone how they really are when you live with them so that is what happened so um fast forward my character had annoyed everyone i was the topic of the day i remember when i filmed this certain video and i posted on my channel it was about depression but i had to delete it because everyone around me was like you know <laughs> like <laughs> So this particular in the morning, I was waking up one thing, another thing, I'm not a morning person. So I'm, I'm always grumpy trying to wake up in the morning. So I grabbed this uh, water and started drinking. And so I wadudu. So like they were just climbing on me anyhow. Um, so I was the topic of the day. I'm supposed to correct myself, you know, so adding to my grumpiness in the morning. So I took this water to try and wake myself up. So while in this conversation, um, let me tell you something about me. Confrontation doesn't sit well with me. Confrontation, when I'm in a confrontation, I usually feel like I really need kujitetea. Like I need kujitetea because all my life I think I've lived just trying to fit in, trying to prove myself, trying to feel like I'm not the sheep. Yet I always end up being the sheep. It's okay to be different and accept being different. Don't try to fit in. So, nikaanza kujitetea. And of course, when I'm in confrontation, I, I panic. Like, I, my anxiety is at level 120%. Yet, <laughs> I have bad anxiety. So, I tell you, it makes the situation worse. So, I tend to shout in a confrontation. So, that means I will tend to disrespect the people who I'm in a confrontation with. One thing led to another. Nikashtukia poop, one slap. <laughs> Not on me, but on the bottle. Ikamwagika chini. And I was like, hold up. What is happening? The next minute, Nikola, like, this person was almost, like, taking another weapon. So I tried to escape through the door, wakafunga, lock and key. I even tried to jump over a wall, but it wasn't possible. So I was like, I should just have left when this person gave me the chance to leave, which was earlier before it's e conversation and ended so high to this level of anger. So, uh, but I felt like even me was tired. I feel like I had to explain myself. But at this point, I wasn't being given the chance. I, I was the one who was supposed to listen. I mean, all my life I've lived listening. I feel like my voice has never been heard. So, I mean, I try so hard for someone to get someone to listen to me and to understand my point of view. So, Vilemajili Mwagika, I tried to get up to try and mop it, but sir, it wasn't the situation. And I was on the floor. The next thing I remember is I was on the floor. Now, on this moment, I didn't even load what was happening. Like, my mind was just in panic mode. I don't even know what is going on. I need a moment. Just give me a minute. <laughs> but I, I was really like...
like heat like heat like unajua ile unaundwa like yeah but even those ones were not even my biggest struggle because i barely remember how the blows were blowing on me the only thing i remember is that i was being choked and like almost like being strangled that is the thing that traumatized me the most i don't even know why i'm not crying now because i think the power of healing thank you jesus <laughs> So um that is the thing that I remember the other things where I was hit and blown and kicked and whatever that I just remember after effects you know the muscle pain and everything so um and of course I was not just like lying there down someone just hitting on me and doing their thing of course I was fighting for myself Yes, I was not strong enough, so obviously nilikuwa overpowered. So the meeting did continue after that, and of course I, my head was not there because I was like, what has just happened to me? This is just like the biggest trauma of my life, you know, <laughs> one of my biggest. I mean, um, so, I remember in this conversation, the the other party was now trying to justify what they have, they have, they have just done to me, and they're like justifying their anger, saying that, you know, one day when you have kids, you will understand, and I was like, no, I'm never gonna have kids. Did I mean that? Yes. I mean, since high school, I've never I wanted to have kids maybe 10 years to come it will change i don't know and i also say that no i will never get married because they were justifying that you know if you're in your husband's house your husband's will beat you your mother-in-law will beat you and i was like hi i'm a feminist do not say that to a feminist because you know why they will justify women like why should you even sit down and be beaten and i'm like that is okay in the african culture damn <laughs> anyway so i i also said that you know i will never get married did i mean that 90 percent? i did mean that 10 percent. i've come to realize life is so lonely to spend alone i would rather get married for companionship you know but no kids yeah that has not changed anyway from then after that meeting of course then now everyone now expects you to go back to normal everyone was on that table was against me that is how i felt that day and i've never forgiven any one of them i've just let it go of course forgiveness is part of letting go whatever man so i decided i'm gonna leave that place because i mean toxicity i think that really pulled me to stand up for myself i did vlog yeah i feel like my life has been on our channel damn um i did vlog that day so i moved and of course <laughs> i moved the next day but prior the previous night of course the lecture still continued also have you ever been in a conversation with someone and all you can get from that conversation is just how much generational trauma is being passed on to you like yo this world is so sad like this world is so dark everyone just have their own dark things that need to be sorted out and if you can't sort, sort it out now your grandchildren and will suffer from it so just save them that generational curses and traumas and all that dark shit you know convince me not to move but i had already made my mind i'm one person that if you shout at me i'm gonna leave you i dump you there there and then if you raise your hand at me it's something i'm not gonna tolerate because all my life i've lived in violence like serious violence you guys so when i'm a feminist right now i understand the pain that women go through because i mean violence i mean it's trauma that i'm healing even this this story i've actually healed and i thank god so that's when i decided to stand up for myself so the moral of the story is do not stay at that toxic environment stand up for yourself and let me tell you standing up for yourself means that everybody is gonna be against you standing for yourself because it's like you know in the african culture you're supposed to stand with everything you just tolerate everything kuvumilia everything but when you okay decide you're going your own road you're gonna be lonely and alone but know that jesus is with you you are gonna be more sad and depressed but the lord is alive you are going to need a lot of courage and strength to actually walk away from abusers and toxic relationships and yeah sometimes it's good to love people from a distance just love them from a distance if it is too toxic for you to be close wapende tu kwambali sometimes that that is all you have to do that is all you have to do for your mental health i mean nobody cares about you except you trust me not even your blood i mean they love you but only you can love you most in jesus <laughs> of course <laughs> That is what happened and you know just on top i feel like the moment i moved the, on top of everything that i was going through scared about life not knowing what tomorrow is gonna be like just full of uncertainty the only person i had to trust was jesus so i started a new life in may last year and that is i usually say that anyone that i met last year honestly it was not genuine because it was my darkest part of my life like up to december i was depressed like the whole of last year was just the ghetto <laughs> mentally but um i did meet some nice friends who made me laugh at least and realize that there is something to hope for in life so i'm grateful for that too and i'm grateful for god i mean <laughs> jesus 
as much as last year was my worst year 2021 i still had good memories my first solo trip first vacation met good friends met my best friend like there is always good and bad but that is my story guys please do not justify violence walk away if in fact you have to walk away there is no option do not justify violence okay that is it so i hope i inspire someone share it as widely as you can and there is this book that i read that helps me with healing in itua you can heal your life by lois hey if you want it just dm me in a pdf it really helps for you to heal and to learn how to forgive it's hard it's hard but you will definitely come out stronger so yeah thank you so much for watching give the video a thumbs up subscribe and let me know what you think about my story share it to someone who's gone through violent abuse of i've just been thinking of sharing this image plus nights but yeah bye